Hello everyone. This time around I want to take on blockchains and Bitcoin, that type of thing, again. I've talked about it before, and my opinions on the matter haven't really changed. But I see that blockchain is all the rage these days. Everybody's talking about it, and that's not why I am, really. Everyone's talking about it. It's being touted as the solution to everything. You know, it's being oversold, just like every new or newish buzzword technology is. Now, it's all the rage because we're seeing, I think, largely because we're seeing uh, uh, cryptocurrencies. I'm um, using that term in scare quotes there. Cryptocurrencies. Like Bitcoin, uh, have been, a lot of them have been doing fairly well. And then there's Bitcoin that's uh, soared up to like $6,000 per Bitcoin uh, recently. And, and uh, you know, that, that sort of thing. So, so it's got people's attention. Now, I think there's a fundamental flaw in blockchain technology that nobody is really talking about. Everybody talks about uh, consistency across the network, authenticating uh, things and all of that stuff. Uh, and there's a lot of research going on in, in areas related to that to improve latency, to improve consistency, uh, that sort of thing, to improve convergence time, all of that stuff. There's a lot of work being done there. And I don't want to stop people from doing that work. And certainly researching blockchains is not a bad idea. Blockchains are not necessarily completely useless or necessarily even a bad idea. But at the moment, I think they're an idea, like a solution searching for a problem. Like there ha I haven't seen any problems out there that aren't better solved by more conventional means. Um, now, unfortunately, uh, for the uh, ultra-democratic set, uh, those conventional means involve central authority, centralized authority of some kind. And, and people seem not to like that notion, but uh, centralized authority is about the most reliable way of keeping track of things. And, and that's generally what this whole blockchain thing is intended to do. Uh, with a level of authentication and transparency, theoretically. But it doesn't need to have that. Like, a central authority could use a blockchain to track things and make sure it hasn't been tampered with and all of that stuff, too. Uh, so blockchain itself is not a magic bullet or anything like that. But what's this fundamental flaw that, that, I, that I, I think exists? Well, it's not the notion of the blockchain itself. Uh, it's not the... Uh, potential issues with throughput for change rate of change or consistency or uh, transparency any of that stuff uh, most of that stuff I think is probably solvable uh, at least in specific problem domains now the the fundamental flaw with uh, blockchains is the perpetually increasing amount of storage needed to uh, keep track of the blockchain. Now, in some circumstances, that might not be an issue. If, say you've got something with low change velocity or you know, uh, low throughput, uh, maybe something like land title registry, something like that. It doesn't change a lot uh, comparatively. And where you do have to maintain the entire history no matter what, yeah, maybe it makes sense there. Okay, and that, and that perpetually growing storage requirement isn't all that much of a problem. And it's a problem you have no matter how you store the information, so maybe it's okay there. But a lot of these uh, situations where people are touting blockchain as a solution, they aren't situations where you benefit from having perpetual historical information. And I don't see anyone talking about how you prune the blockchain history in a way that doesn't break all of the supposed benefits of the blockchain, the, like the historical record, the transparency and all of that. So how, like, let's just pick something, say it's a currency, 
And it might be Bitcoin, it might be something else. But say we've got a blockchain currency. Okay, that's great. So we've got, we just, we just decide that we're building up our history amount, like our blockchain is getting too big to be wieldy. Uh, so we're going to prune the blockchain. Well, how do you do that? Well, we could just say we're going to prune everything out of the blockchain for more than uh, a thousand blocks ago. Well, okay, so we'll do that. So we'll say, okay, anyone operating on the blockchain doesn't need to maintain blocks from older than that. So we're, we're basically re-origining it. Originating it. But see, here's the thing, the blocks themselves don't hold the entire state of the system. You have to track the blocks from start to end to build up a picture of the current state. So how do you do this prune without losing critical information? Now, to explain, it's best explained by example here, I think. So we prune everything starting at 1,000 blocks ago. We just lose everything before that. That doesn't mean it's not available. We just say we're not going to bother tracking it uh, everywhere, right? So to operate on the network, you don't have to maintain that. Now you've got a problem. Sure, if we've got, for any of the currency that's continually changing hands, sure, it's going to be represented somehow in those most recent 1,000 blocks. But suppose somebody obtained some amount of this blockchain currency 1,500 blocks ago and hasn't spent it yet. Now they come along and they want to spend that some amount of that today. Well, now there's a problem because the, the clients or, or the, the nodes on the network that are processing things, they don't have this node they don't necessarily have this node that they they that shows th that this transaction is valid. They they don't they no longer have any information on that amount of blockchain currency because it's from 1,500 blocks ago. And this is the 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 problem that needs to be solved if you're going to prune a blockchain. And the way things have been implemented, at least with Bitcoin, you can't do that. I'm not saying it's impossible to come up with a scheme to actually handle this pruning in a way that's, uh, that's well, transparent, traceable, and accountable. Uh, it's certainly possible. Um, and it's, uh, it's the same problem you have when you're maintaining any kind of data in a massive linked list, which is essentially what a blockchain is. Uh, you need some way of pruning the necessary operational state so that you no longer have to maintain all of that just to operate the network. Uh, now, I don't know that there's a good solution for that for a digital currency. Uh, I, don't, I don't see how we could make this work reliably and you know, sensibly uh, for a proper transactional currency. Uh, that is a currency that's used for current transactions where you do something and the transaction needs to happen basically immediately. I don't see how we can implement that uh, for something like a digital currency. Uh, you know, Bitcoin claims to be a digital currency and it could certainly be used as such, uh, but it has some fundamental flaws that make it not good as a currency, a general currency anyway, not related to the blockchain, uh, most of which, the biggest one of which comes from the notion that currencies have to have an intrinsic value because they're scarce. And it turns out that for a functional, uh, a truly functional currency, that's not a desirable property. Uh, there's a reason we've moved away from the gold standard. There's a reason we've moved away from gold itself as a currency in a lot of cases, and silver and, and what have you. 
the precious metals, the, uh, the stuff that is scarce, there's a good reason that we've moved away from that. We haven't necessarily gone in, in the right direction with our fiat currencies, but there's a reason we've done that. Uh, and Bitcoin has done exactly the same thing that gold has, and it's instituted a scarcity to it. It has an artificial scarcity. Uh, so while gold can be used as a medium of exchange and so on, and Bitcoin can as well, they both have very similar properties. And one of those properties is scarcity, and that makes it less than ideal. Uh, as a general medium of exchange. Uh, so I, I don't see, so while Bitcoin itself may be fixable, uh, you know, in the nature of the blockchain, if they come up with a way to modify it uh, and get buy-in so that it can be, the blockchain itself can be pruned so that uh, a Bitcoin client doesn't have to maintain, uh, you know, 100 gigabytes of state, uh, in order to be fully accurate, you know, if they come up with a way to do that, uh, then Bitcoin itself would be perfectly functional as a commodity, uh, like gold or whether, whatever, be a virtual commodity, uh, like gold, silver, uh, oil, uh, whatever, right? Uh, so that would be certainly uh, it, that would be desirable to fix that problem, that perpetually growing data set that you need. Uh, so if someone can crack that, uh, then I can see uh, a blockchain could be useful in a lot more circumstances than I see it being useful today. But I still don't see it being the right choice for a general day-to-day -day currency. Uh, it might be useful as a uh, intermediate value store for going between different uh, mediums of exchange. It might be useful the same way gold is useful for something like that. It might be useful maybe as an inflation hedge or whatever. But I don't see anything based on that being useful as a general day-to-day -day currency. And it's simply because of the way they're designed and the way the, the state necessary to really be certain that you can process any transaction accurately, just grow, it grows without bound and it grows rapidly. As the number of transactions increases, the amount of data you have to maintain increases dramatically. Uh, now, that's not to say there aren't ways to fix that. You know, there certainly are ways to improve on it. And people are certainly experimenting and researching that, and I certainly don't have an issue with people doing that. As a matter of fact, I'd love to be proven wrong. Uh, if someone can prove me wrong on what on the notion that the uh, perpetually growing state, that the blockchain is not really going to ever be a viable replacement of the current central authority-based fiat currency, if anyone can prove that it's a viable uh, replacement, go for it, please. Don't let me stop you. But just asserting it in the comments on this video is not proof. Just saying, but there's Bitcoin, is not proof. None of these cryptocurrencies, as they're called typically, have been in existence long enough for the uh, blockchain growth to implode, uh, to implode the whole thing, for it to collapse into a virtual black hole. None of them have been around long enough to do that yet. None of them have been around long enough to show uh, what I see as the ultimate end problem. And uh, I'm sure people, other people have seen this, and I'm sure people are looking for solutions, and maybe they'll find one, but I really don't think anyone's going to find anything more than Band-Aid solutions. So this wouldn't, so I still don't see how 
uh, this could be viable as a currency that uh, lives for a long time, like say the Canadian or US dollar or pound sterling or something like that. I don't see how you could replace uh, the British pound, uh, where you could go back in time to the 1500, replace the British pound with a blockchain that tracks every single transaction denominated in British pounds since 1500 and have it not implode. I don't see how you could do that. Uh, because that would include every time someone uh, someone purchased a loaf of bread for a shilling or uh, or what have you. So that'd be you know every transaction between any people that ever did a transaction in pounds. All of those would have to be represented in that blockchain, and I think people severely underestimate the number of daily transactions that happen in the uh, world of commerce. Uh, because even today, there is a huge number of untracked cash transactions. So you can't even look at the payment uh, processors like Moneris and see and get a, a good feel for what level of transactions you have to support. But uh, even at the level that you can see from the credit card companies uh, and so on, you still have no chance with current blockchain technology anyway, of processing that volume of transactions for an extended period of time. Uh, and and this, is, this is why I don't think it will actually ever work. Now that's not to say that there isn't some way to have a decentralized uh, uh, electronic, uh, you know, peer-to-peer -peer type currency. I, I'm not saying that we can't manage something like that. I just don't believe blockchain is the solution. Anyway, I I really don't have much more to say on that uh, this time around. Uh, maybe this will spark a debate, maybe not. Maybe three people will watch this, maybe not. Who knows? Uh, but however you slice it, I... Uh, my considered opinion is whatever the uh, research going on right now, we will never come up with a viable solution for a day-to-day -day transactional currency that operates on a blockchain. Uh, that's, that's my word on it. Uh, maybe if you're, you're watching this video in 2250, you'll be sitting there going, ha ha, somebody actually got it right. Or maybe you're going, what a maroon. But anyway, whatever. That's, that's all I have to say at this time. So uh, if you uh, disagree or whatever, uh, you know, leave a comment, uh, spark a, a lively debate or whatever in the comments. Uh, or leave a like or a dislike if you like or dislike the video. Uh, whichever, you know, doesn't matter to me. If you want to be notified of future videos, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. And make sure if you want to be notified, you turn on those notifications or you won't get notified. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.